This is a Hypercart Blitz talk. I'm Uli, and I will tell you why Hypercart was so fucking great. This is Hypercart. It was made by Apple in 1987 by Bill Atkinson, Dan Winkler, and uh, its main metaphor is about a stack of filing cards. So it uses all natural metaphors, healthy for you. Um, Bill Atkinson, you might remember, is the guy who did Mac Paint and Quick Draw on the original Macintosh. Um, so, of course, HyperCard had powerful drawing tools. It had 40 patterns, 32 brush shapes, 15 tools, one zoom level, darken, lighten, flip, rotate, stretch, slant, perspective transforms, edge tracing. And all of this was stored in a sort of persistent image almost like small talk so if you placed something on screen it stayed there you quit the application you started it again it came back um, that was a very natural thing compared to all of today's programs that just randomly grab stuff um, and reorder it after you've quit your application and you have to place it again um, HyperCard was actually everything before everything else, so it did everything first. It was Interface Builder before Interface Builder. It had a graphical and a code editor built in. It was Xcode before Xcode. It was a software erector set. Um, it had an English-like scripting language, so it was AppleScript before AppleScript. Um, it had a sort of just-in-time compiler in version 2.0 before Java was even a moat in uh, uh, whatever the guy was called, Zai. Um, yeah, and uh, so as you can see, the scripting language is very simple. You just write some English text. I'm dragging out a few buttons. I draw some icons. I can do all of this in HyperCard itself without any additions, plugins. Um, and uh, I can just create animations. Um, the text fields in there were fully under script control. So you could just move text or whatever. And so let's create a second card now. Again, I'm doing some drawing. And um, now we want to actually do some something like hyperlinking because of course it was the web before the web so we just create a button make it transparent choose the link to button go to where we want to go say link to this and we have a button that we can click we can just click um, to cre create our code so it was scratch before scratch um, I can just choose a visual effect and it will use that I click and there it goes um, but also um, um, so it was basically scratch before scratch. It did animations and graphics, as you can see, with different pages. So you could argue it was Flash before Flash even existed. Um, but also um, you could create serious databases with HyperCard. So technically it was FileMaker before FileMaker. And that is because it had a background layer, which is kind of like a master sliding keynote. And... Um, a foreground layer and if you created text fields in the background layer um, you, they could have different text in the foreground um, making the background your database layout and the foreground your individual records each card being different but slightly similar um, that was easy to understand and basically you could also use it for presentations like this of course which means it was powerpoint before powerpoint and uh, this animation, by the way, is from HyperCard's tour stack. So this is something that you could actually see back in the 1980s when you used HyperCard. Of course, um, that's not all. HyperCard had a programming language, so um, it also had a debugger. It was easy to trigger. You just set a breakpoint in your script, you run your script, it stops at that breakpoint. It's reliable, it's built right in. You can step 
over for each one. You can trace. You can open a variable and message watcher window, and these windows will show um, all the messages being sent by the user interface or whatever. You can even um, show messages that nobody is handling to learn which messages are available. And this message and variable watchers is always available, not just when your script is stopped in the debugger. So you could look at all the global variables as your stack is running, can watch them change. You can look at all the messages that your actions on screen produce. Um, you can instrument and edit your program at the time it is running. So basically, this was Xcode's fix and continue feature which Apple added to Xcode and then removed again because they couldn't make it work. Here in HyperCard, it worked right from the start until the end. So HyperCard, as I said, was a software erector set. That means you could basically do software, uh, do copy and paste programming in the positive sense. It was the ideal of object orientation. You can reuse any code that you see anywhere. You can learn easily by example because nothing was locked. Like everything, all the scripts were in plain text in there. Yes, there was a protect stack function, but it didn't like encrypt anything. It didn't compile anything. It was just uh, to keep people from uh, breaking things. Um, and uh, of course, as I mentioned before, you could edit all this code while it was running, could watch it, so there was no edit compile run cycle that artificially slowed you down. And here you can see a bunch of example stacks. Some are ones that me or friends did, others are ones that came with HyperCard, others are ones that you could find on the net. So for example, you had art bits that came with HyperCard, lots of clip art. Um, you had an animation toolkit that offered you a timeline like in Macromedia Director um, as a separate stack that someone wrote. There was an example stack that drew graphs and diagrams. There was a palette that let you record audio with the microphone attached to your computer um, and just use them in your stack. So if you were making a game like that little game that my sister made that you can see there with a little river running through, um, Whenever you needed a sound, you just popped open that palette, um, made the sound, produced it somewhere how in front of your microphone, and it was there, and you could continue using it in your program. There was this little train set that came with HyperCard 2.1, where you could lay out track just as you wanted and have the train ride around with, with sound and uh, animation. Um, even drive through tunnels with an echo toot and everything. Um, there were hundreds of buttons included that you could just copy that performed certain things like move to the next in the previous card or um, copy little previews of a card or whatever. Um, it even had a additional stack that added color to it because HyperCard technically was black and white and you could script all the tools and all the parts of HyperCard, all its menu items, and for example, create drawings by just scripting the drawing tool, saying choose the line tool, draw from here to here, here to here, here to here, and uh, suddenly you have a, a grid of lines or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was really flexible, like a programming language, but much more natural, because it was just um, you know, remote controlling your computer doing the things that you could do by hand by writing English lines that say, do this thing. Um, and of course, HyperCard was the inspiration for a lot of things. So I've mentioned before programs that were created. There were uh, the wiki, the first wiki was actually a HyperCard stack. So Wikipedia kind of can draw its lineage back to HyperCard. Um, the World Wide Web kind of was inspired by HyperCard, or at least HyperCard kind of anticipated parts of the web. It was a local version of the net um, that, you know, was exchanged via sneaker net because uh, back then networks weren't really such a big thing yet. Um, 
but basically people built their own web pages and handed them off to other people to read and to look up stuff in and things. You know, there were Star Trek episode guide stacks and everything. Um, of course, apart from Hypercard itself, there were many other programs that were inspired by it. Some even were clones of it that expanded on it. There was Supercard, the first Hypercard clone that came a few years later that integrated full color and multiple windows and other stuff that Hypercard never really gained. Um, multiple windows in one document. There was a version of Hypercard for the iPad called NovoCard, which uh, sadly doesn't exist anymore. Um, there was a, a Mac program that kind of tried to be a hybrid between a database and Hypercard that was called BayCard. Um, there is LiveCard, which, uh, LiveCode, which um, was a cross-platform uh, Hypercard clone originally coming from Unix. Um, that added all sorts of weird, complex programming stuff to Hypercard to let you create really professional software. Um, and uh, there may be something else that I am working on right now. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, I hope this has given you a vague idea of what Hypercard is and why it was so fucking great. If you want to learn more about Hypercard or try it out or whatever, I recommend Hypercard.org. It's a Hypercard fan website that I run that basically um, collects resources uh, like Discord chat rooms, um, examples, movies that demonstrate Hypercard uh, in use. Um, that document all the data structures that were used under the hood, the file format. Um, try to keep alive knowledge about Hypercard. Um, and my name is Uli Kustra. You can find me at Uli Witness on Twitter or at Uli Witness at Mastodon.technology on Mastodon. Um, or you can email me or you can look at my website on my blog at http orangejuiceliberationfront.com. Thank you and bye-bye.